I think in today's world, the, the teaching of evolution of millions of years has permeated the world, and many people have been indoctrinated to think that that is science, because the word science has been used for our technology, and the word science is used for evolution of millions of years. And I find even many pastors think, you know what? I believe in technology. Of course we do. Um, so I believe in science. Yes, I understand that. Um, therefore, I, I have to believe in evolution because that science, it's the same science. Uh. It's not the same science. Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron, and thanks for joining us for a special YouTube exclusive with Ken Ham. Ken is the founder and the CEO of Answers in Genesis and the Creation Museum, as well as the Ark Encounter. Uh, Ken, it's so great for you to join me today. Thank you. Hey, great to be with you, Kirk. Ken, I've got some questions that... Uh, I get asked all the time, and some of these questions I wrestle with myself, and you're just the guy that I wanna talk to about this. Uh, Ken, you have spent so much of your life dealing with dinosaurs, the flood, evolution, the book of Genesis. Uh, can Christians believe in evolution and millions of years with regard to the age of the earth? Well, you know, there are Christians who do believe in millions of years, and I'm not saying they're not a Christian, but I will say they're undermining the authority of the Word of God. The idea of millions of years came out of atheism of the 1800s, uh, where atheists said the fossil layers were laid down millions of years before man, uh, but the fossils are full of death, uh, diseases like cancer, abscesses, and so on. After God made man, he said everything is very good. So if you believe in millions of years, you're blaming God for disease, God for death. The Bible blames our sin for death. Death came after sin. You can't add millions of years to the Bible and be consistent. Why do you think that evolution is such a popular belief? Well, you know, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if you go back to the temptation in Genesis 3, uh, the devil said to Adam and Eve, did God really say you can be your own God? And because we sinned in Adam, we have that nature. We would rather trust the word of man than the word of God. And so therefore, if we're not looking to God's word and letting him speak to us and believing what he said, you know, our nature is we want to explain things on our own uh, by ourselves. We don't want to listen to God's word. And if you're not going to believe in creation as as the Bible tells us, then what are you going to what are you going to do? You've got to come up with some sort of evolutionary ideas of explaining things. And I think even many Christians have succumbed uh, to that temptation to take man's beliefs and add them to God's word. So. Do you believe that God created the earth in six literal days, or are those days symbolic for longer periods of time? Well, we've got to look at the Hebrew language and let that uh, word that God has there in Genesis, which is written in Hebrew, uh, speak to us. And the Hebrew word yom, uh, translated day, can have a number of different meanings. If you look up a Hebrew lexicon, a Hebrew dictionary, it'll tell you in different contexts it can mean different things. But if the word yom is connected to a number, evening, morning, or the phrase evening and morning, or the word night, it always means an ordinary day. And if you look at each of the six days of creation, we have evening, morning, number, night uh, for day one, connected to the word day, and evening, morning, number for each of the others. So in context, and any Hebrew lexicon you get would will, will give you the example of when day means an ordinary day is for each of the six days in the creation week in Genesis 1 because of the context and how they're written. And then correlate that with Exodus 20 verse 11, in six days God made everything and rested for one. It's where our seven day week comes from. Yes, they are six literal days if you take God at his word. So, so if that's true, then, then why are there so many evolutionary creationists? I mean, why wouldn't people who are Christians just believe that the Bible means what it appears to mean and go with something that is now stretching everything out over millions of years. You know, I, I think in today's world, the, the teaching of evolution of millions of years has permeated the world. And many people have been indoctrinated to think that that is science. Because the word science has been used for our technology. And the word science is used for evolution of millions of years. And I find even many pastors think, you know what? I believe in technology. Of course we do. Um, so I believe in science. Yes, I understand that. 
Um, therefore, I, I have to believe in evolution because that science, it's the same science. Mm. It's not the same science. The science that builds our technology is based on observation, experimentation, repeatable uh, experiments and so on using your five senses. Science or knowledge about the past, that's belief about the past. And I think many people have been trapped into thinking that, oh, if we believe what the Bible says, we're giving up science, which you're not. That's what it's important to understand. Ken, is there real evidence for a creator in the world today? Well, the Bible says if you don't believe in God, you're without excuse. So there must be evidence. It must be all there. It must be all around us. So the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And it is around us. First of all, you know, even the, uh, the aspect of design, meaning there has to be a designer. It's interesting how scientists will go into a cave and they'll see an, uh, a, a spear, uh, you know, as a spearhead or an axe, and, and they immediately think, oh, this is designed because humans lived here, humans were here. And yet you look at DNA, that complex information system, language system that builds life. It is the most complex language information system in the entire universe. I mean, there's no comparison when it comes to the amount of, of complexity and design in DNA compared to an arrowhead or something like that. And yet they look at DNA and say, chance, random processes, and they look at an arrowhead in a cave and say, that's designed. Uh, so the evidence for design is so obvious when you look at living things. Can do creation and science contradict or are they both singing the same song? Well, you know, when I debated Bill Nye in 2014 at the Creation Museum in Northern Kentucky, he said, okay, this debate's about science versus the Bible. And I got up and said, no, it's not about science versus the Bible. Um, it, it's about the science of one religion versus the science of another religion, if you like. Um, because the first thing I did was I defined the terms. You know, the word science um, the word science means uh, knowledge. It comes from the Latin scientia, and it means knowledge. And so what are you saying? It's knowledge versus the Bible? No, no, no not at all. And there's different sorts of knowledge. There's knowledge that you can gain by using your five senses in the present that builds space shuttles and airplanes and computers, or your knowledge about the past when you weren't there, your beliefs about the past. And that's what we've got to understand. So when somebody says, oh, science conflicts with the Bible, are you talking about man's beliefs about the past? What are you talking about? Because usually that's what they're saying. Science conflicts with the Bible because they're believing man's beliefs about evolution, millions of years, about the past. That's not observational science. Creationists believe in science. We believe in science. We believe in technology. Um, and we teach science even at the Creation Museum and the Ark. We have science labs here. I was a science teacher and I was granted my credentials in science by secularists who I went through a secular university and they said, you now have your credentials in science because I believed in observational science. Why is what we think about evolution and creation so important for us in our everyday life? Well, what you believe about where you came from affects your whole world view. It affects your view of yourself, your view of your future. It affects every aspect of your life. It, ex it, it affects your worldview, what you believe about uh, life and how you should act and how you determine what's right and what's wrong. If there's a creator, he owns us. He sets the rules. He decides what's right and what's wrong. The Bible says he created us, that he created a man and a woman, that he created marriage, and marriage is to be a man and a woman, uh, that he created two genders of humans. He created male and female. The Bible tells us that we're sinners. We're in rebellion against God. And God says because of this, we'll spend eternity separated from him, which is why he provided a savior and said, if you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus, God's son, who stepped into history to be a man, uh, to die on a cross, be raised from the dead, offers a free gift of salvation, then you spend eternity with him. But if you believe we came by natural processes and there's no God, who decides right and wrong? You do. Um, so what's the purpose and meaning of life? Ultimately, there's no purpose. When you die, you're done. That's what Bill Nye said to me when I debated him. I, I, I was taking him through the ark and I said, what happens when you die, Bill? When you die, you're done. 
then what's the purpose of fighting against creationists? What's the purpose of, of anything ultimately? When you die, you're done. That means life has no ultimate purpose and meaning. But God's word tells us, no, when you die, you're not done. Your, your body dies, but the real you, your soul, who you are, you're not done. And you're, you can spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven if you put your faith and trust in him for salvation, or you'll be eternally separated from God. It's very, very important. Uh, to understand that what you believe about where you came from affects your eternity, affects everything. Ken, thanks for the Creation Museum. Thank you for the Ark Encounter and uh, all the incredible books that you have written. Thanks for being here and thank all of you for watching. Please share this video with a friend and be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos.